Today, we're going to leave the comforts of your air-conditioned house with the sweltering heat outside. We're going to leave the fast food restaurants and the small batch breweries slinging out drinks down the road from your house behind. We're going to head to the plains of the frontier, where the laws weren't rules, but just general guidelines. Where a band full of hellions could ride in and murder the leaders of the town, then move to the next town and pretty much get away with it. We're going back to a time just before the start of the Civil War, before the United States was really united. It's time for us to delve into our first cannibal and our cannibal month. It's time we fried up a story. I didn't see you there. Something big is going on here. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot. Paranormal, UFOs, true crime, and more. We won't just be spouting articles. I was researching for your entertainment. The beginning of a new world. <laughs> the best guac you'll ever fucking eat. True story. It's basically like one day you walk outside and you see that the ants are playing with matches. This, this is, is the, the Black, Black Hat, Hat Report. Report. See you on the other side. Welcome to the Black Cat Report in episode 53. Last week, we had a mini episode release, but now it's time to get into the juicy stuff, the gory stuff, the carnivorous stuff. I'm Joey, your host for this episode, and with me is the mouthwatering Gil. Hello, hello. The scrumptious Selena. Hello. <laughs> and the delectable Betsabe is out for today. We'll also have a special guest with us today, Pequent Rachel. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a word that means with great flavors. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. fancy pants! That sounds far. The source MSG, for the win. <laughs> the MSG of sisters. Um, <laughs> I did want to hop in real quick and um, kind of give a little bit of backstory about why we're releasing this episode so late and kind of we uh, veered off track a little bit with Cannibal Month. Um, so um, Rachel and I's father passed away last week on Thursday. Um, so we've been dedicating, you know, all of our time and everything to to family, to taking care of our mom and to to being together. Um, that's kind of obviously thrown things off the rails. Um, really appreciate all the love and support and understanding that folks have given us the folks that have kind of like been in the know about stuff. Um, there's no need to like reach out or anything. If that hits you like hearing something like that, just if you can, um, if you're in good standing with with your family, um, just, you know, shoot them a text right now and just tell them that you love them. Tell them that you appreciate them. Tell them that you care for them. So, um, yeah, uh, not to bring things down too much or whatever, but just kind of wanted to let you know why we hopped off schedule and just give a shout out to the good parents out there because, yeah, we're yeah, all only here for a little bit. And some of us, as we're going to get into to uh today get eaten along the way so let's just hop right into that <laughs> well thank you gail thank you for that uh well colonel <laughs> sanders has nothing on our first cannibal today we dig into levi boone helm the kentucky cannibal brown, brown, brown. <laughs> levi boone helm was born on january 28th 1828 He's not related to Levon Helm, the famous drummer and singer of the band, but his parents were Joseph and Nancy and were poor and could never get ahead in life. Boone was Can I born just say in something. Go ahead. Kentucky Fried Children. Ah, <laughs> love it, love it. Sadly, we will not be getting into Kentucky Fried children this episode but there might be some kentucky fried men boone was born in lincoln county which is part of danville kentucky in a household of 10 brothers and sisters so a lot of kids his parents looking for a better life bought a wagon train to head to missouri slowly they scratched and clawed their way to owning their own home and finding their own piece of land the author of the book who is in the show notes here describes in incredible detail how much the Helms parents were well-liked in their town. But instead of going into that detail, I'm going to go and move ahead into our protagonist in this tale. It, it, the author was just like, probably for 15, 20 pages, was just going into how many people would help the family. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. And it was really very interesting. So, it does come in later, but yeah. 
he wasn't coming from like a complete lack of community and isolation and like, you know, just like really like out there in the sticks. Like he did grow up in a somewhat supportive, caring environment. I'm yeah. assuming like people it, cared about that. And, and as we find out later, the dad actually was like very well liked, was a great person. And as well as the mom and the community was, they loved him. So going into it, Boone's body matured fast. And by the time he was 10, he was big as most of the other 16-year-olds. He was described as prone to rage. (laughs) Go figure. And in a fight, he would be the one who finished it. He had a cunningness in him, though, that no other kid could match. He was a bully, even though he was much younger than the rest of kids he was around. Well, by the time he was a teenager, he would perform fun exhibitions he could yeah. wrestle and beat the men in their 20s, which is crazy for him being like 13, 14, 15, you know? Damn. So yeah. he would do this really cool thing. So he would throw his knife down on the ground while he was riding on horseback and oh, then no. jump down off the horseback, grab the knife, hop back on the horseback before it would stop running. So he would just be like, God, you know, damn, it is crazy. He was Speed a great racer. fighter. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was a big fighter obviously, as we were saying earlier. Yeah. He wanted to prove to everyone that he could win. He would wait until people would come out of the taverns at night and then pick fights with them. So they'd be wasted just walking out, and he's just like, oh, oh you, let's fight. And uh, so he would always win. <laughs> it's one of those... Ken- the Australian Kentucky. Yeah, one of those yeah. Kentucky Australians that we, we've heard so much about. Exactly, yeah. His parents kept their distance from him because... Obviously, they became afraid of him. And they were also disappointed in him because, I mean, he literally was just beating up everybody he could as a kid. Boone was a very proud man. And adding to his rowdy and violent ways already, he and the local sheriff, of course, didn't see eye to eye. So, right? He's a little taller than the sheriff, you see. Yeah, he was he was bigger. (laughs) You know, the sheriffs at these times are always, you know, like big gutted. Chewing mm-hmm. tobacco, spitting on it with his feet up at the uh, at the old sheriff's office. So, after one of the boxing matches outside the tavern left one of the local drunkards badly beaten and almost near death, the sheriff put out a warrant for Boone's arrest. So, this honestly is the most coolest cinematic thing I think I could ever see for this guy's life. Instead of running away or giving up. Boone, riding his horse, rode up the steps and into the courthouse, not getting off his... He he didn't get off his horse. He burst into the court. That was in session. They were having a... Oh, my God. Yeah. And started cursing and yelling, saying, What fool of a judge added his name to a warrant? His angry and vocal disruption actually got the judge to drop the charges against him. And then... Drop the charges of contempt of court, which he had just gotten for riding into court. <laughs> Literally, like, as he was there. Yeah. I just had these floors swept and waxed, and now your horse is in here, and there's shit all over the place, and there's knife marks in the floor. Yeah, Could you just knife. leave? Like, yeah. God damn. So after they dropped the charges, he would never got off his horse the whole time. He trotted back <laughs> out of the courthouse, down the steps, where the sheriff and some of the sheriff's men were waiting, watching him to see if they could arrest him because they figured that he was going to get arrested. All right, Pink Daisy, time to do our happy dance. Tra 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 tra. And it's like, yeah, show him your moves. Tra 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 tra. <laughs> Boone looked at the sheriff and just smiled at him as he trotted out of town. <laughs> Fucking ballsy, Damn. man. Like, this dude that is, is badass. Yeah, yeah. He knew what like, he was doing. It's also like he's in there for like basically whatever the equivalent of like disorderly conduct is. And he got over charges of disorderly conduct with disorderly conduct. Yep. Like yep. That, that's a whole fire with fire. <laughs> yeah, he did. So as he turned 20 years old, most of his brothers and sisters moved out of the farm, but Boone remained. Pretty much drank away all his money and was just working the farm, you know, taking over his father's stuff. So he's pretty much Boone's farm. Yeah, Boone's farm. He is pretty much the person in high school that just never moved out of his parents' house and took up the family business. 
You know the guy. You see him in the bar every weekend. Yep. Yep. <laughs> on this live, horse. Live down yeah, on his yeah. horse. Yeah. <laughs> Boone decided that he was ready to start playing the field. He found a woman that he liked named Lucinda Browning. They married only three months after he had trotted into the courthouse to protest his charges. So three months after that, they married. Jeez. Damn. Damn. Yep, very quick. On their wedding night, he spent most of his time courting his first love. That's right, liquor. <laughs> All right. I was going to think you said the horse. A man nope. with priorities. Come on, he, Pink Daisy, let's get a drink. <laughs> he drank himself pretty much under the table so that she carried him across the threshold when they were going into Aww. it. And she laid him on the bed. Damn, she must have been you strong know? as fuck. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just imagine that she like had him over her shoulder and was like dragging him in because this guy was a big guy. You know, he wasn't small. Yeah. So I would have just been grabbing him by the ankles and drag him. <laughs> yep. I would have just Sorry, moved the baby. bed to where he fell down. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Like, Sorry, baby. I'm not strong. <laughs> it's okay. I'll put something under your head. Put some cardboard under him and pull him that way. <laughs> um, so after he woke up, he dragged her into the bed, and as the author said, he basically raped her. Ooh. Yeah, that turned pretty All bad. right? Yeah. Throughout their marriage, he would make sure that she acted perfect, or he would punish her. So this is the start of like the not funny parts. <laughs> mm. He punched her in the face and beat her. She spent more time than not with a black eye. So Boone was pretty much a complete and total alcoholic. He ran up tabs on any bar that would have him, and Lucinda would have to, as well as being beaten, would have to deal with the bar tabs. And so with any money that she could scrounge, she would go to the bars and pay some of his bar tabs for him, which is she was living life of hell with this terrible person. Yeah. But... Luckily for her, she got a bit of respite. Some of Boone's friends convinced him to go on a mining trip. He literally just picked up and left. Didn't tell her. I mean, that makes sense with this guy, honestly. Probably, so, probably yeah. for the best. Yeah. Probably for the best. <laughs> she didn't even know he was gone until a few days when he didn't come back. But to be fair, he really left because nobody would give him booze anymore. Yeah. So, Fuck you, I'm going to go make my own liquor. Pretty much. So once he came back, his wife, Lucinda, had got the idea. She's like, I'm divorcing this guy. I'm done. So she set up divorce. He, in his normal way, wanting to know who was to blame and who put the money up for the divorce, went to the courthouse to find out. But he eventually found out dismayed, and he was dismayed and angry to learn who did it. It was Boone's father who put the money up. (gasps) Joseph. Wow, good man. Mm-hmm. Lucinda, who was also pregnant with their child, Damn. had all of her finances and whatever she needed taken care of by Boone's father. Aww. Mm-hmm. That's why Aww. I said in the, the why people loved him. This guy was a great guy. Even yeah. though this literally bankrupted Joseph and his family, they Shit. lost their house. Aww. He still made sure to give the money to Lucinda so that Lucinda and his grandchild would be okay. Boone basically Aww. destroyed everything that his family had built, and his family left on the first wagon out. Wow. Yep. That's a very but sad Lucinda story. and the baby were okay? Yeah, they were okay. They still stayed in the mm-hmm. town because they were pretty good with money. So mm-hmm. now Boone was alone. And nobody was there to restrain him. He no longer had his father looking down on him. Boone had hit rock bottom, and it was time for him to start over. Some of Boone's cousins came to town to hang out and drink with them. One cousin named Little Barry Shoot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that nickname. Hell yeah. I don't. That's his name. <laughs> LBS. Yep. He was the younger cousin of Boone. Shoot. Dingleberry Shoot. <laughs> They drank together and talked about going west to the gold rushes of California. Or I don't at that know, time, Boone, I in think Texas. we should just head west. We ain't got shit to do here. Come on, Boone. <laughs> Boone 
would ply and pry into getting Littleberry to go west with them. So it was really Boone trying to get him to go west mm-hmm. because Littleberry, you know, just got into town, was just was just chilling, wanted to relax, drinking at the bars. Um, one Little of the things that don't fall far from the bush. Yeah, one one of the things that I, they said is Littleberry was young, so he was he was a little bit naive. So they would he was you know open to talking to Boone, right? So he's manipulative. I can't say the word he's, manipulative. He's able to Basically. be manipulated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And but he was smart enough to leave the bars before Boone would get too drunk because he knew the uh, yeah he knew the reputation Trump. of Boone. So the he pattern, was like, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go home. Yeah, he knew the pattern. So little berries bruise easy. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. Shoot. He finally, <laughs> after weeks, got a handshake and an agreement to go west. So the little berry was finally like, okay, fine, let's go. They were so drunk that, you know, who did not make stu- stupid promises to go while they were wasted? So the yeah. next day, Boone was like, I'm so ready to go. So he met up with little berry at his house, woke him up. Boone noticed there was nothing packed or ready to go. So Boone's like, hmm. Little Barry. He laid the pimp hand down. Yep. Boone asks, what do you think about the Texas question? (laughs) You know, he's just asking. Texas question. Yeah, because he didn't want to. Was this the hot politics at the time? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, if you were Little Barry and knowing your cousin, would you want to go west with this guy? Yeah. No. No. Well. It's in the name. Yeah. Well, of course, Little Barry said, I say no. So, Uh-oh. this would lead mouth. to his first murder. Oh, shit. Boone stabbed his cousin with a huge Bowie knife. Boone. Oh, did he juice him? <laughs> Boone, not realizing what he had actually done, looked down at the knife and saw blood everywhere. He checked to see if Boone was actually dead or not, then proceeded to take everything he owned grabbed his knife out of his cousin, and he left him dead on the floor. Oh, shit, I thought there'd be jam in there. <laughs> he left town heading to California. Damn, mm. juiced his ass. Damn, mm-hmm. he, yeah, he juiced his ass. Yeah. he. I just want to say, this seems like, to me, more of an ideological killing. For me, I think mm. that he had so much rage with everything that he had said was being done to him. He wanted to take mm-hmm. it out on something, and I think he had just realized... Early on in the talking, that Littleberry just wasn't going to go anyways. It was pretty much mm-hmm. just an allowance for him to actually kill somebody. He was yeah. going to kill somebody. This was his like, okay, I, I'm going to do it to this guy. I was going to say, do you think that um, basically in killing him, it was kind of almost like how he burned his bridges at like every single like bar that he went to where he just kind of like screwed everybody over and like Mm. had to leave. And it was kind of like, I mean, obviously this dude has like no respect for people or Mm -hmm. for like people's emotions. This dude ain't got empathy at all. Um, And so like killing Littleberry was kind of like a, okay, now I have to leave. Yeah. It gave him a a little justification. Yeah. It gave him something that he needed to push himself out. So gotcha. Like he was just looking for an excuse to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. Basically is what you said, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He just wanted an excuse. He was going to kill somebody. He just wanted the excuse. Like most serial killers yeah. that get that first kill, they're looking for the excuse to kill and the reason, the justification to kill. And then they start going into their like mm-hmm. their kill exactly. streaks. Mm-hmm. To their villain so, era. Mm, their villain era and this is going well boone started his a little earlier but he's gonna start going mm-hmm. into his uh i think psychotic era Sweeney so todd era yeah yeah Sweeney how todd old era. was he like boone 20, was like 21? 20 he's like he's like late uh teens early 20s at this time jesus yeah, yeah. okay so after he headed out of town on the same day they found little barry's body and obviously, they knew who killed him. They already knew. So the sheriff and, and uh, they hired people to go ride out after him. But they caught up with him before he got to the Indian reservations. And I want to say that this is very important because the Indian reservations at the time, 
they were very dangerous for anybody to go to. He w- he would go out there, they would find him, they would murder him, and then they would come to the towns and start killing those people because they thought they were getting invaded. There was like a real contentious uh, kind of, in quotations, treaty between those people. And obviously, rightfully so, because they had literally all their land taken from them. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> there is a justification for this. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Kinda, his, yeah. They, they, they found out, they saw that his horse was dead, and he was scraping mm-hmm. at the ground to find water. So, damn. Yeah, he was pretty much last legs, you know? On yeah. their way back, he was talking to himself, and he kept trying to escape. He had been driven mad. So mm. they basically took him for trial. The judge decided that Boone was psychotic. And they got a doctor yeah. to sign off to send him to a sanatorium. So, yeah, you think this would be the end of him, right? Yikes. That, I mean, getting sent to a sanitarium at, in those times, like, bro, in the 1970s, that shit was, like, completely inhumane. Could you imagine? Mm-hmm. Also, we gotta, we gotta say, too, like, this is a white dude, a young white dude yeah that is getting sent to a sanitarium like you really got to be off your rocker like you really really got to be off your rocker like you can get elected as president at that time you know like well now but um you can get elected (laughs) you know what i'm saying they're just like well he's too crazy to work so give him a spot in office you know like everybody gets beavers we love him you know like Mm -hmm. this dude is he's off it He was off his rocker for sure. (laughs) Well, as soon as he got to the asylum, like the cunning person he is, he dropped the Mm. crazy act and became a model citizen. So, right? He would help the doctors and nurses in any way he could. Even with his good behavior, he was getting restless with being inside all the time. Because at this time, they like the asylum, they would just leave you locked away you know you were just sitting there you were not couldn't go anywhere they really weren't looking to treat people at this time they were just putting them in a place to hide away from the rest of society so like prisons and jails now pretty much (laughs) yeah the doctors started giving him some outside time because you know honestly they kind of liked him they all kind of liked him because he helped but he uh, there was a point in the book they made to say that he would give help and would never ask for anything, but would be very thankful when somebody gave him something. So he was playing the mm. act very well. And like Flynn. Mm-hmm. So they, he, they let him walk outside in the gardens, and one of the orderlies uh, at the uh, asylum took pity on Boone and would walk with mm. him to the forest on the edge of the asylum property at night. This would be his escape plan. Dang. Every Every time they would walk, he would go out and pee at the same spot every time. Mm. Mm-hmm. So so one night, he pretty much did his normal going out to pee while the orderly talked to another co-worker. So the co-worker didn't want, or the orderly didn't want the co-worker to know that he was taking Boone out on these walks. So he was basically like, please don't come back, Boone. Please don't come back. Please don't come back. Stay out there until like I you know, the co-worker goes away. So... Mm. When the other coworker went away, Boone hadn't come back. Mm. The, the orderly went to look for Boone, and he was gone. He escaped. Oh my god! Damn. I don't know why. I thought that like him peeing somewhere, he was gonna use the like urine or something. <laughs> I'm gonna I fashion like, a sword, pour it on his ass. Yeah. <laughs> Nah. The face. I was like, I mean, he, he were like, he peed in the same spot every time, and I was like, what is he gonna do with that pee? Yeah, yeah. Right. in a weird way. Sorry, guys. No, that's funny. Uh, I mean, that you know, great. I'm this slowly attracting cunning. a bear that I'm going to train with these animal crackers <laughs> until I'm like. <laughs> this guy was cunning, you with know. He grass. he yeah. planned. Yeah, he planned everything he did because he wanted to make sure that he could get out and not be found. They never so we know so far that one of his secret nine spices and herbs <laughs> yes. was um, little berries and urine. <laughs> yeah. So we've got two. We've got two of the secret nine spices and herbs. Little mm-hmm. berries and urine. Okay, cool. Maybe we'll get the seven other later. 
So yeah. they never found him and pretty much wrote it off as he was killed in the woods because honestly, <laughs> they didn't want to take the time to go find him. So Boone got lucky. A passerby picked him up. The man who picked him up was a prospector, and he was loaded up for a trip out west to get rich finding gold. Ooh. This okay. would be his second murder. Oof. Mm. Boone started literally just rummaging through the prospector's things and wouldn't stop until the prospector physically restrained him. So then Boone turned around and smashed the prospector's face to death with a rock. I told you I don't have any wet wipes in here. But it, oh, <laughs> stoned. <laughs> he got Flat stoned. Out stoned. Yep, not the good kind. Not in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. So he now was rich with goods oh and clothes. God. Boone okay. was set up to okay. head out. Nobody was looking for him because honestly, nobody cared. This was the he frontier. Didn't have anybody? Yeah, he didn't have anybody. This whole. This whole episode is feeling like a justification for Bigfoot right now. Because this dude, I'm assuming, is like <gasps> nine right. foot tall, you know, like 280 <laughs> pounds of muscle and like literally just walks off of like the sanitarium. And they're just like, well, can't see him anywhere. I guess he's gone in the woods. And then the bear his head's like pee. popping through the top of the trees. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If He's wearing clothes that are like six sizes too small, and they're just like, "Yeah, just that milk like, out west, it's crazy, but it does." <laughs> you just see like a like a big old like like trail just being broken through the trees. Yeah, yeah, his little pathways. <laughs> we need to look up Sasquatch <laughs> sightings around this time in that area. <laughs> Boone Squatch. Oh yeah, Boone I'm sure Squatch. it was all over Google at the time. Yeah, they oh, uh, each the yeah, asylums Boonshine. Yeah. So, you know, this was the frontier. So he took to a few different carav caravans who invited him to travel with them. But he would always keep his distance. He would okay. put his fire far out from the normal caravan. And he wouldn't join the wagon circles when they would stop for a few days. So while he was traveling, he murdered and took all he could while, while he was there. There aren't any numbers to show how many people he killed and robbed. Because, well, again, this is the frontier. And if you disappeared on the frontier, most people would never ask questions. It was just yeah. the point of the trail. You had much less than a 50-50 chance to make it where you were going. Boone had a failed day of hunting and was starving. So he came upon a man who had also been out hunting that day. Boone shot him with his rifle from far away. He then made his way over to start ransacking his things and found, well, the hunter also had no food. Both their hunting trips were dismal and amounted to nothing. What could Damn. he do? Except this time, Boone was starving. Mm. He looked at the body of the hunter, thought to himself, if I don't eat, there will be two corpses lying out here from some coyote or wild animal to feed on. So he we've drew out his... There. Right? We've <laughs> all been there. We've all been so hungry. So he drew out yeah. his knife drowned with weariness and hunger and crawled out to the body. He hacked at the corpse's clothes to take them off. He then stabbed the knife a little bit deeper, took off some of the skin and muscle. He then brought over it to the fire and cooked it. The skin hmm. was half raw when he took it out of the fire. Oh. And he took his first bite. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. With that... He still had that little bear, like little berry jam on his knife too, and I'm sure he mm -hmm. just like spread it over top, like butter on toast in the morning. The other yep. white meat. Mm -hmm. This was his personal Long Kentucky pig. Fried Chicken. So mm -mm -mm. he thought that he when he murder. took his first bite, a light would come down on him and strike him down from heaven, because you know, mm. obviously, this is a <laughs> cannibal thing, and that was horribly looked down on an abomination Even for him, to God. he was like this is not a good thing so yep but he did it yep i like to think too real quick that like um like the like first nations folks that were still like out and about and still like having like their strongholds out there and like you know they were just watching this whole time like what is he doing over there why is he oh god oh 
wow yeah i like wanted to feed him but like now i see what he's doing and um yeah savages. we're just gonna we're just gonna let him go over there that's that's they fine we're just gonna savages. backtrack around yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is a funny story about him being around an indian nation later that we'll talk about that <laughs> <laughs> The Kentucky cannibal treated the body as his own personal Kentucky fried chicken. The only thing that was missing was a side of mashed potatoes and a Coke. God damn. That's just some brains and some blood, baby. Right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Ring him out Put in his little cup. Put a few peanuts into his Coke. Mm-hmm. Oh, Maybe man. he was like the He's first zombie, except for he wasn't dead. <laughs> he was dead inside. That's just cannibalism. Yeah. He was dead inside. <laughs> that's just yeah, cannibalism. That's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, like, so, cannibalism's only wrong when you're not a zombie. And I've really been thinking about that lately. Like, how come zombies get to be, like, eat humans, but, like, humans can't eat humans? I don't get it. It's unfair. Zombie lives matter. Yeah. Just like, That's you true. know. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a weird double standard. I'm not here for it. Yeah, maybe we should go into the ethics of it maybe later. Yeah. Yeah. So, the next day... After he passed out after his meal, because after he ate it, he literally just fell asleep because, you know, he hadn't eaten all the time. So when you eat, you know, when you have a really big meal, yeah, you you know, (laughs) (laughs) when you eat, you you eat a bunch, you know, you you pass out. So that's what happened Mm -hmm. to him. It was his tryptophan. So the -hmm. next day he couldn't look at the mess he had left of the hunter. So he didn't even look at him because, you know, he ate him and he went on his way with the thought of, well, I should have taken more to eat along the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, do you ever order, like, you're home alone, you've had a long day, you order, like, two extra large New York style pizzas with all your favorite toppings on them and stuff. And then, like, if you're like me, you eat an entire one and at least a, you know, slice or two of the other. And then, like, by the time you're getting ready to go to bed, you're like, I'm not even going to put this away. God, I'm so full. I can't look at another slice. So, you know, like, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. He okay, yeah. that's a bit. He needed a hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Boone made it out to California, and he met with the first few cousins that didn't know his exploits. So, his family, most mm-hmm. of his family didn't know about him that were out in California. Big Berry he- and Medium Berry <laughs> and Dingleberry and Dingleberry. And Berry. He generally hung around with them and worked a bit, and of course drank and fought a lot so at this time in the old west it was normal to have gunfights and lots of killing his cousins like everyone else got tired of him bumming around and the constant fighting and shooting like normal like everybody does because he would literally go into every bar he would use everybody he could just like his parents just like his wife just like his friends the people he met he would use them for everything they could and wouldn't work. So his cousins ended up trying to hatch a plan to get rid of him. But turns out they wouldn't even need one. As after a night of drinking, Boone shot and killed a bar patron in cold blood and perked up the ears of the sheriff. So there is a difference between the fighting and killing, right? And the murder that he committed. The fighting and shooting normally in that time had were grievances. So in that time, if you called mm-hmm. somebody a liar, that yeah. was legal yeah. thing, oh, precedence yeah. to kill somebody. So all you had to do was say that was a liar. If you had witnesses that cor- corroborated that story, it was fine. He had no reason to shoot this guy. He just killed him. So I will say, I will say too that like, um, so I guess like, you know, my biological dad and stuff like that, the, um, first dad that I had in my life because I've been lucky enough to have a, a couple great dads in my life um, but like the dad that raised um, sister Rachel and I Thanks. like he was coming from the old school was born in 1930 Three. 1933 Gil Sr. like that straight up Yellow like belly. to the liar. day that he died like you call somebody a liar and it's like no that was grounds to kill someone like mm-hmm. and like he carried that and he was also from like um well he's from pikesville kentucky like he was from like coal land and stuff like his coal miner his whole life it was it was old school even back during the old school what we see now and like calling somebody with liar like that yo 
<laughs> like yeah. that was growing up in our house. Like you do not say that. You don't even hint at that. You don't joke about that. Like that was, yeah. So like what you're saying about like, but that was grounds to kill somebody. Like I believe that a hundred percent. Cause like we saw our dad, like if somebody even hinted at that, that was no, like you are, you were just as solid as your word and your reputation. Mm. And like somebody saying that about you is like, that is straight up character assassination. And that honestly, at the time when like you needed to rely on your community and your neighbors and stuff like that, that's also threatening your livelihood. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like a, and that's the thing too, that people don't realize it's not just a respect thing. It's like, no, like the local business won't give you like a loan or like let you borrow stuff. Like yeah. people won't help you out when you need it. And everybody needed a band together and stuff like that. You couldn't find a job. Like saying that to somebody was like death socially. Yep. And so like, like putting a you, gun you in somebody's head. Yeah, like you defended your honor. It's like somebody coming up and be like, oh, you need your car to get to work. I'm going to take your car. Also, I'm going to burn your house down. Also, I'm going to steal your phone. And it's just like, I don't have anything to repair my life anymore. Like it was a it was a very, very big deal. Your reputation. So this is this is real. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Yep. Very true. Well, I mean, imagine it, though. They didn't have Google to look up people's histories and to fact check them being a liar or not. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and word didn't tra like travel, but by a pigeon, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> by a guy on a horse. Word, word. <laughs> yeah, Pony Express. Pony uh -huh. Express. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So, because of the sheriff chasing down on him, Boone mm -hmm. went to the Pacific Northwest. Oregon yeah. was calling. Yep, trying to get that sweet old gold. Hell yeah! Boone gathered up some of the money he had made with his cousins, and bought himself some supplies to get on with. During his travels, he got a little lonely. I mean, he could only I'm talk hungry. to his horse so much before the horse would get bored oh, of him. God. Give him a Pink small sigh during one of his long-winded stories. <laughs> Pokemon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as he would meet up with people and tell stories of adventures throughout the West, mm -hmm. he met a lot of uh, Rough Riders, as most mm -hmm. called them. Rough Riders were just I've robbers. I've seen their advertisements the in... Oh, I was thinking of the Rough Riders that I saw the in flowers. advertisements in like men's bathrooms at gas stations. Ooh. Um, you know, they're like they're what? they're I forget what what they're um I thought it was a rap they're, group. they're they're calling cards like they cost about 50 cents, 75 cents. And it's like weird. It's just like this plastic balloon. But but yeah, those are the only Rough Riders I know about in gas stations. Well, DMX had him some that? Rough Riders, too. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, what yeah, I was thinking. the DMX Rough Riders. Wow, yeah. history Rough goes riders. way farther back than I thought. <laughs> they were pretty much just robbers. <laughs> and these days. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Uh, they would ride the trails and steal people's things. So, obviously, pirates Boone would get worst. along with them. Yeah, they're the oh, horse yeah. pirates. Boone would horse regale pirates. them with st <laughs> horrible stories about murder. And I honestly don't know if he had mentioned eating somebody to them, but they all ended mm. up just slinking away for the most part, <laughs> except for a few, except for a few. A lot of them left oh because God. they're just like, this dude's ridiculous. But <laughs> he got a few people to join to, to create a posse. Basically, mm -hmm. he got like six people. So six people That's to travel a with squad. I would say so. Yeah. You know, you have to That's feed these people. Squad. You have to, you know, he's, well, he's the I mean, leader of these guys. So you have to feed them. You have yeah. to give them homes. You have to give them when shelter. every town is a grocery store. It's not that hard to find food. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <You know. laughs> they taught Boone how to rob someone with a gun. So he didn't know this, by the way. So he just pointed at him <laughs> and he say, give me your money. Okay, let me try. Let me try. Show me your penis. <laughs> No, give him me. Oh, now he's showing. You. God, it, no, he ran away. He ran. He's still running. His pants are between. God, oh, God damn it, Boone. I'm sorry. I'm trying to learn. Like, just. Boone, you're not trying to rob them for food. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Give well, me your arm. <laughs> <laughs> As you can imagine, yeah, they, they picked a few sites that were easy to rob. Rich travelers coming back from the gold rush looking to buy houses. Yeah. So I want to I okay. say this, too, about that day. So you would think, you know, you think nowadays, like, oh, cool, I get my pay, I take my money, I put it in the bank, right? It didn't mm -hmm. work that way these days because you had mm -mm. to take your gold with you from where you got it. You had Then you had to go to where you wanted to buy your house. 
So if you Mm -hmm. say you didn't want to live in Oregon because there's nothing there, there's only gold mining towns that you probably don't want to live in at this time because they just weren't built up. There was a lot of people like Boone who would go in and just rob people. So you think you think like movie theater prices are bad. Can you imagine how bad they are in a in a in a gold town? But I I, I did want to ask here too. So this was and this is totally off track, but it's a little bit related. I gotta ask. So um the Knights Templar, like the notorious like Knights Templar, there's you know, go watch Indiana Jones, you'll you'll learn the history. Um one of the ways that they made so much money and they became so powerful, right, as like an empire was you would have these like pilgrimages, right? So like you would have like all of the the Catholic kingdoms and stuff, like that, Christians from all over the world. And what they would do was um, you would give um, folks in the Knights Templar all of your money, right? Or like a large portion of your money. Knights Templar, literally a bunch of like knights that were basically Christian mercenaries, would hold on to that money and they would send a bank slip more or less to whatever town you were going to. So when you got to that town, you could withdraw your money from the Knights Templar's bank. So they were kind of the first international like banking establishment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You could just, you would have a receipt with a piece of paper and it'd be documented in your name and yada, yada, yada. But that made it safer for you to travel through like long, long, long stretches of like, you know, different countries and trains and all the shit like that. And like get there and like if somebody tried to rob you, you're like, dude, I only have five bucks. And then they would look at the receipt and be like, shit, I can't even take this money out because I don't meet these descriptions and so on and so forth. So like, was there anything like that in the Wild West? Like, did they have anything set up where it was just like, um, I don't know, were the Masons doing some shit like this? Like, you know, where it's like, that's an easy way to make money. Just transport money for folks. People will pay you anything. Yeah. In the frontier, they didn't have this yet. The one thing that I think about in this is that you really didn't want to have to pay people to guard you at this time because you didn't. First off, these most of these people didn't have money, so they're going out yeah. there to find money, and then on their way back, you don't know, you don't want to tell people what you have, you know, you don't want to mm-hmm. tell, hey, I've got so much gold in there, I need protection because most likely those people were rough riders and they were going to rob you anyways. So yeah. you really just kind of had to get lucky or move in the right spot, or and you also didn't want to have too many people in your party because that means you split it however many ways for people who are mining. So this became easy pickings for Boone and his men. So after a while, of course, the sheriffs in the area, they started hearing about them and Boone decided "Eh, it's probably time to move on. So we don't get arrested. So on October 1859, they headed to the Utah territories. A A huge silver deposit had been found in the territory and Boone figured this would bring similar California gold rush money here. So mm-hmm. at this time, huge veins of silver were found there. So he's like, well, I have all these people chasing me here. They know where we stay up. They know where we sit. So let's go somewhere else. Nobody knows us over there. Yeah. Well, it's here that we will go through and kind of fast forward through a bit of travel because they just traveled for a while getting there. But they got through a few skirmishes and then got almost caught by Native Americans, a tribe called the Diggers. Their actual name was the Palut tribe, but they were called the Diggers because they would dig into the grounds, supposedly. And in their houses were built into the um, built into the side of a a, a adobe. And so it was made Mm -hmm. it easier for them to, to live. That also, funny enough, keeps it cool in the summer. Hot in the winter, which is really cool. They're very smart with that. So they were chased by them, and they narrowly escaped. They lost a few few men, though. Uh, this roundabout trip trying to escape, they lost a lot of supplies. Mm. Mm-hmm. We know where this is going. They came into Soda Springs on the eve of winter, which is a, a small town, and they found it empty. They moved on and found a hunting cabin to try and hunker down and escape the storms. So at this time in winter, it was actually a really bad set of storms. And this year, it was really bad compared to years before, of course. So Boone, being a fearless man and a harsh man, as we already found out through his other adventures earlier, he didn't quite wait for the full storm to break. 
but they ate all their horses and then tore through their supplies. Damn. Boone knew that they could not survive. So he decided, I'm going to leave. Leaving Ooh. the rest of his guys behind. So the other part of I'm his gonna, party. I'm going to call card. On, I'm going to I'm going to call time out on that just because like if that is true, this is the first time he's done something selfless. This does not seem in his character. Like, I feel like he might have saw them and been like, fuck y'all. There's a bunch of Italian immigrants coming in this way. And like, I've never had Italian before. So like <laughs> he was going off <laughs> to like have some really red rigatoni like <laughs> over. <laughs> um, like, yeah, he was like eyeing up the local plumbers like. Mm. It's Mario time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like this seems a little I'm, I'm going to I'm going to call a card on this author. Like it seems too selfless. Like this dude did not just magically be like, I'll leave. That's the only way you'll survive. Like, uh, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. No, the reason he left was because that's the only way I'm going to survive. So there we go. The other part of his party found out his plan and they tried to follow him. But all were lost except for one person. That one person, he only the, the author only mentions and it was only inscribed that he his name was Burton. So that was the only we nobody knows if that was his surname first or if it was him. his first name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how he wrote all those movies. Um that's how he wrote Sweeney Todd. So he followed him mm-hmm. through the storm and they headed out to the next town, which was called Fort Hall. So it's really badly snowing. They could barely see like probably five feet in front of them. Wait. As they both Ford F one fifties. Yeah. I don't even know how many Ford F one fifties. Or cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Like Twenty thousand cheeseburgers. Sorry. That's a lot of cheeseburgers. So as they traveled, they both wore down, of course. But Boone, being his normal self, he was very steadfast and he could go on forever. Burton, however, fell down and couldn't get back up again. Life alert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, they didn't have that at the time. But we're about to get a food alert. Bird alert. Yep. They were starving, and he just couldn't make it. So Boone was like, well, screw him. I'm going to keep going. Why are he- you putting seasoning on me? What? What is this, <laughs> sage? What is rosemary? But I don't, what are you, do- why are you starting a fire? That is a big fire. That is bigger than what we need tonight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm on the menu. So with all the mozzarella snow falling on him, <laughs> they found the <laughs> fort was empty with no supplies. <laughs> the Damn. only thing they had was collected firewood because all of these places in the winter oh, no. would people would just leave because nobody could deal with the winter there. They wouldn't have enough food. Yeah. It was too cold. They would go somewhere a little warmer. Burton was still laying in the snow and basically looking up welcoming death and feeling like he was already dead. So he basically thought he was going to die because Bo- and Boone had just left yeah. him. He felt a warm hand on his back. Boone, his great best friend, <laughs> came back oh. to help him. So I got you in my belly. Burton found he literally <laughs> fell down about a hundred yards from Fort Hall. He was so close and couldn't make Damn. it. So Boone took him to the house that he had set up the fire. He already had a fire set up. And Burton fell asleep, thanking his friend for saving him from sure death. Damn. Oh, no. This is about to be a Bugs Bunny cartoon <laughs> with uh, with Elmer Fudd. He's about to wake up to a nightmare. Ooh, yeah. He awoke to Boone standing over top of him and the fire roaring behind him like something out of a cinema movie. Out of a movie. He couldn't Maybe. move. And he could hear him licking chomping. Literally, he could hear him licking his lips. And he could see Boone with his long Bowie knife. And he watched as Boone Ew. sawed off his leg. <gasps> God oh, damn. God. Ooh. So he likes dark meat before white meat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. While Give him a leg up. 
I just like <laughs> picture a bunch of like a bunch of fucking like cliff bars and protein bars and shit fall out of his bag as he's getting his knife. And he's like, oh, you, you have some food. Oh, wait, why are you why are you ignoring those? And he's like, I'm just looking for my salt and pepper real quick. I just, we stopped at Burger King early. Let me just. Yeah, let me just put that right there. Just like mm-hmm. what? That's Yum. not a blanket. That's not going to keep me warm. I'm just going to put. Oh, I think I got some sweet baby rays over here. Let me just get that. Get that mm-hmm. processed sliced cheese out. Oh, yeah. yeah. It on his head like they did with the kids <clears throat> on that trend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so while he slept while Burton slept he didn't realize or even know that Boone put a tourniquet on his leg to stop the flow of blood and keep Ew. Burton alive while he fed Ew. on his body damn oh my he God. wanted to this keep him alive yep. so this is definitely fresh Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the blood would keep flowing. It wouldn't go bad faster. Oh, that's like that song "Timothy" by the Boys. Have you ever oh. heard that song before? Mm-mm. It's you'll have to hear it. It's from like the '60s, I believe, and it got banned on the radio because it was about cannibalism. Mm-hmm. It was literally about these people that get stuck in a mine, and there was. T- Let me think. It was me, Tim. And oh crap, I forgot the other guy's name. I think it was like Joe. Yeah, it was Joe. They get stuck in a mine. Long story short, they were starving. They thought they'd never get out, and they ended up eating Tim. Oh no. And the main part of the song is Timothy, Poor Timothy, Tim. where on earth did you go? Yeah. And yeah. they were like later on, they're like, oh, this wasn't about a person. It was about a donkey. It was indeed about a person. <laughs> Everybody knows it was just so it'd play on the radio. It's like the yeah. boys. Why O-U-S. And that is the song we will use to promote this episode. It's yes, my ringtone because oh of Tim. Oh my god. Well, it's because Aww. my husband's name is Tim. <laughs> and just so everybody understands. Yes. He's, still, he's still alive. He's still alive after this episode. So Burton could smell the roasting meat and his <gasps> stomach grumbled. Oh no. Oh, I want to say hell no. something oh. that struck me weird was that Boone actually was chatting with Burton after he cut off his leg and ate some of it as a friend. He was actually treating him better. You know, I guess he's treating his meal better than he's treating him as a friend. Um better Damn. than he than he angry. was before he ate him, you know. He's going to feed him some of them, isn't he? And this is super disgusting. But Boone oh, no. actually gave Burton a plate of meat of his oh, own no. leg. And Damn. he that's like ate when you, it. Like, feed a, that's like when you feed a pigeon like a chicken nugget, you know? Yeah, but it's <laughs> own chicken nugget. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's himself. That's, Man. oh God, I would like, I would eat Ew. it, but I would vomit. Because I would be so hungry. I would actually just be like, I'm not going to eat because I'm actually going to die. I would rather die right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he Quite was in, strange. Burton was in delirium, though. Like, he was so yeah, close to death. The pain. He, the pain, he hadn't eaten. I mean, obviously, think about it. Like, yeah, he turned into his lead, but he literally sawed through his leg and bone to get there. He's not giving him bourbon. There's no bourbon there to help him, you know? He's just pretty much fading in and out so Damn. boone honestly because he was treating him like a friend and you know he wanted to keep burton's uh spirits high so he started doing his own version of a comedy show to keep the air light so he told a few jokes like why didn't the cannibal <laughs> eat the guy with no feet because he was lactose intolerant <laughs> luckily i'm i'm not but <laughs> oh my god Damn. And, and what Boom did the cannibal hour. choose as his last meal? Five guys. <laughs> but sadly, I only have <laughs> oh. one guy to eat. Uh, oh my God. Five guys, burgers and thighs. <laughs> <laughs> well, throughout this whole ordeal, Boone would keep going back and forth to get wood, you know, because he had to go outside and get wood. Burton figuring that if he didn't do something, he was going to be dead. Yeah. So safe, safe assumption. he slowly dragged himself over and found that there was a gun on the table. 
Damn. You know, the one gun that they had, because they had, like, getting rid of mm-hmm. most all their supplies since they were trying to survive. So he gets to this table, and, you know, like, there's a story that he he passed out before he got it, went back, and then Boone put him right back by the fire, figuring he just crawled somewhere. So then Boone, Burton yeah. basically was like, I got to I gotta get to the gun. So he gets there, gets to the gun. He op- looks in the chamber. He found one bullet in it. Oh, my God. Because he figured that he would probably not be able to kill Boone with one shot. <gasps> he put Damn. the gun up to his head. Damn. And pulled the trigger. Damn. Yeah, I would too. Mama. He <laughs> Boone found him lying there dead. And Boone got pissed because now the meat would spoil instead of him being able to slowly cut him up alive and eat him, just like you said earlier. God Jesus. damn. My well, leftover wait, was was it like, snowing? Ah. It was snowing. Yeah. But he literally he, it would still would have died. Body, it, it still would have been body bad. on the Assume. snow. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and it See, could it get frostbite. Mm-hmm. But it would mm. it would be smart to put it outside because Might it would freeze draw burn. in. Might get freezer burn. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> they didn't have we've all had okay. those <laughs> we've all had those healthy yeah. choice meals that got freezer burn that yeah. we were just like, damn it, and had to throw them away. You know, just it like might Boone. Attract, it, mm. it might attract the bears, and then the bears could come in, and then he could. I don't know how he'd kill the bear. Well, I guess with we know knife, how maybe. much he sucks at hunting, so. Yeah. I don't know. He's learning pretty fast with all these. This episode's really a PSA about teaching your kids how to hunt. You know, yeah. like it's very important for them to learn how to scavenge, how them to forage, and like for them to hunt. That's chicken. honestly what this episode's about. Chicken yeah. cults, like, already got it down. Yeah, chicken cults got it down. Shout ah! out, Gavin. Shout out, Gavin. Mm-hmm. So, Boone, seeing this, decided that he couldn't stay here. So he took a few parts of the body with wow. him. And I can just imagine him. him with an arm sticking out the back of his top <laughs> and just a little hand waving as he said goodbye to all the people he saw. I'm Finger ima- looking good. I'm imagining mm. like a rabbit foot, except for like not a rabbit foot on a oh. keychain. It's just oh. a fucking oh. hand or a foot. <laughs> and then like you said, Joey, it's waving. Oh. It's just waving it, in know, the air. Yep. He, he pushes it down. It slaps him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he was now on his way to Salt Lake City. So he barely survived throughout the trip to Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. As we talked about earlier, he walked up to an encampment of the Shoshone mm-hmm. Indians, the Native Americans at this point. What's crazy about this is that going into a little history of this, there was a lot of tension and a war originally between the Shoshone and the Mormons. And I'm sorry if I'm mm-hmm. actually saying that name wrong. I apologize. This is just how I saw it translated on Google. Um, Mormons. The more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, yeah. They're more Mons. They're more Mons. Mm. Yeah. Monsters. More Mans. The war was over, but still, honestly, they had a lot of tension. So just imagine this white guy walking up in the middle of an encampment of Shoshone who had just had a war with a bunch of Mormons, all this tension. They didn't have any trade going on at the time. They didn't have it like uh, they had scheduled trade, but not normal trade. So they weren't having people coming up all the time. Like a swap so, meet. Mm-hmm. Boone pretty <laughs> <literally>. much. <laughs> Boone pretty much just walked into the encampment and sat at the fire. And the Shoshone pretty much just watched him and decided not to try and mess with him because he seemed like a madman. Yeah. Yikes. This As guy's got balls, literally, attached to his keychain. He has human <laughs> balls attached to his keychain. It was like the pickup trucks. Balls. <laughs> So they just let him stay there, and they honestly tried to help him the best that they could. So if you can't beat him, join him. Really? Well, yeah. So pretty much, they 
they were basically like, ah, some of the white folks are going to come up from Salt Lake City that we have our like scheduled trades, you know? So mm. they said, okay, we'll just pawn him off on him when he comes. He eventually got picked up by a trader named John W. Powell. Mm -hmm. And John was like, hey, I'll take you by wagon to Salt Lake City. So, you know, John was like, okay, it's fine. You know, I'll take him, you know, whatever. And they gave him, the Native Americans gave him some extra, like, um, pelts and things like that just to take him. Because they were like, this guy's crazy. We want to get him off (laughs) our hands. Uh, So they just... If you say if you get into some history, look into the history of the Mormons and how they got to Salt Lake City in the 1800s, mm-hmm. how the city was run and looked. It's very, very interesting. Last podcast on the left did a great series about Mormonism and its beginnings. Very great. The author also goes into detail on Salt Lake City. But we won't go into that here because that's a whole, whole nother story. So mm-hmm. during this time. Just like normal, Boone got into a bar fight, and then instead of putting him in jail, they put him in the basement of one of the elders of the Mormon church. What do you mean you don't serve liquor? (laughs) Well, it was crazy at this time, because they had two sides of Salt Lake City, right? So, like, they had the Mm -hmm. Mormon church side, and it was run very, very well. Like, it was run, Mm -hmm. you know, there was no liquor, there was no things that could uh, run basically like a Mormon church. And the other no, side no of it, coffee. Yeah. Mm-hmm, no coffee, no caffeine. And the other side of it was where the miners stayed. It's where the people, mm. the uh, undesirables stayed, basically. And mm-hmm. they had to decide, they had to have that because they wanted to keep the Mormon side, in quotations, pure. But they still mm-hmm. needed the other side of it. People that are working, people that are bringing other people to the area that are help building the city. So they needed those sides, but they didn't. You know, they, they needed to keep those people there, but keep them separated so they wouldn't get into trouble. So, like high class and low class? Pretty much. Yep. Mm. So the elders decided they wanted to get a, rid of a few of the troublemakers in Salt Lake City. He was going to be their Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. It's Jason Working Boy. from the grassy knoll. You're working Boone. from the grassy knoll. <laughs> Boone approached the square. Yeah. <laughs> the elders promised him pay and reverence. So like they're like, hey, we're going to give you money. We're going to say thank you so much. You know, you're going to be looked on as good. Mm-hmm. But Boone didn't want that. And he said he would do it for a dollar. He didn't even care. <laughs> so he just wanted to What's kill people. Mm-hmm. What's oh, a what's dollar equal? equal to? Yeah, it's like now, ten million dollars. I think day. it's twenty. It said it was twenty three dollars for a dollar. Okay, twenty three okay. cheeseburgers. Twenty three cheeseburgers. So his targets dollar. were Boone's people like, who. I ain't even trying to get paid. I'm just hungry, bro. Put me out there. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a cheeseburger. That's actually that what he said. Money back yeah, then. he said he was. He just if they gave him food, he was fine. So. His targets were people who pissed off the elders of the church, pretty much, or people who actually threatened their sanctity of the community. So Boone was basically handed a menu. Mm -hmm. And we'll work for food. Yeah, literally. We'll work for food. We'll kill for food. Um, Uh, Yeah. Boone pretty much murdered them right out in the open. He shot a guy in the back of his head while he was drunk after he came out of the bar. And the other Damn. target heard he about the murder him. of his friend, and he tried to want to run away, but Boone shot him in the back. <laughs> he didn't see that coming either. He didn't see that coming either. So Boone strolled back to the Mormon elders, thinking he would be a hero, <laughs> but he was cast out as a criminal, and they just set him outside of town with money in his pocket. The church lied? <laughs> Right? Oh, no, no what? church has ever lied. Oh, yep. they're ever. God. So that's so weird. He, it's very believe. weird that you know they that's didn't want they didn't want him to like <laughs> they didn't want him to uh to destroy their image, you know, and that happens mm. all, they didn't all the want time. Him to have any more man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he found out he found his way with a bunch of Danites. Danites were pretty much the army of the Mormons. So they were also in a war with some other, with some Utes. So the Native American tribe, the Utes. 
who mm-hmm. originally were pretty much Utah. <laughs> they Which they were living back in to Utah. our episode on the Skinwalkers. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. He fought alongside them, murdering and killing them. So that's what he did for a while. But okay, like boom, so he's a mercenary. He was a mercenary, but he got tired of this. And his mm. heart started getting called to robbing, drinking, and just being a lazy asshole. <laughs> I know the feeling. Mm-hmm. That's fun. You he needed some me time. He needed want. some me time. Yeah. Some meat so. time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Boone and one other man set off to get back to his calling. So it doesn't mention the name of the guy, other guy that came with him, but so... They came upon three men who had just finished mining and found huge amounts of gold in the hills. Okay. So it came upon Boone to relieve them of this gold and also relieve them of their lives. Boone and mm-hmm. his friend gunned them down with ease. Very easy for them. Okay. The, the reason why it was easy, I just want to say this too. The reason why it was easy is because most, the, the three guys, they had been in you know shootouts before, they hid behind their mules and they hid behind their horses thinking that Boone wouldn't kill the horses because the horses are worth money. Horses can be resold. Plus they could use the horses to take the stuff that they stole from them. Boone didn't care about that. So they shot them. (laughs) They shot through them. They basically shot the horses, shot the donkeys and then killed the guys. So it was, that's why it was so easy is just because Boone didn't care. Yeah, Damn. this is kind of a backfiring on him because all the gold and all the stuff that they stole, they didn't have any horses or pack mules to take it. <laughs> so <laughs> it was so stupid. So they basically took all the gold and they just they went about a mile away, near, still near the road, but a mile away from where it happened, and they buried it. They the gold they took had stolen was thirty thousand dollars at that point. In today's money, Jeez. it's about seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So it's God dang, three wow. three quarter million on like one yeah. day's you know one day's uh, robbery. Pretty good. Yeah. So after they had buried it, they made their way to the next town to rest a bit. With some gold in hand, they went into that town. But just after they got into that town, the bodies of the three men they had just killed arrived. So basically, the people they killed. Its bodies were already in town. And shortly yeah. after the bodies were examined, a rider hurriedly rode into town. A person who had recognized the killers and shouted that the murderer was Boone Helm because he had a huge name at this point. <laughs> Damn. Damn. The sheriff put out Snitches. a wanted poster and a bounty of $700. But Damn. Boone smartly had already made his way out of town when the miners bodies came in so boone chased down the other two miners that left the town so they had five miners basically so i just want to put this in perspective too there was five miners three branched off to one place two miners branched off into another uh, another road and so the three miners had all the gold the other two miners didn't and they went to the they went to the town so boone wanted to grab the other miners that he's, he knew were from there because he had watched him. So he, mm-hmm. he tracked them down and he robbed them. So Boone tracked him down and robbed the other two miners. But this time, for some reason, Boone let them live. Probably because he wanted to make a name for himself even bigger than what he already had. True. Yeah. Um, And they just walked away. Like the miners just, he told them to put down their stuff, walk away and don't look back. And so they did. Like so the movies you're always watching, and they're like, "Don't kill me," and he's like, "You go tell them, yeah, that I so and so let you go, yeah, yeah, yeah." He he did want a name, you know. Um, he did and he didn't. You know, a lot of people say that they want a name, but then when the name comes back to bite them in the ass, they're like, "Shit, I yeah. wish I didn't have that." So, so Boone and his partner in crime decided it was time to put more miles in between them and the robberies and murder. They went up to Canada, Victoria, Canada, far away from the troubles in a place, of course, that would serve Boone alcohol on a tab, the last place <laughs> in the world that would. 
So <laughs> Boone lost all of his money at a card table and then said he wouldn't pay when the bartender called the uh called up uh tabs at the end of the night telling the bartender don't you know that I'm a desperate character <laughs> that's all he said no you could just refer to yourself uh-huh. as a character yeah right such I didn't a weird know that thing was an option say. yeah he's like an npc so boone uh boone was arrested by a sheriff named blake Blake had recognized Boone from a murder in a nearby town and a warrant was out for his arrest. Blake knew he could hold Boone for only three days without charge. So he Mm. had held him and sent out word to other towns to see if he could get a charge. This guy, Blake, had pretty much, he knew the guy. He did want him to get away. And at this time, he had no charges into that town. So he couldn't, figure out like uh he couldn't get anybody to basically say this is a murder and he didn't have any witnesses to say that he had done something so sending out the charges to get other people to send stuff to him so that he could hold him and then ship him to that town to get a trial Mm -hmm. which is how it kind of went he didn't get a charge from any other town Damn. damn it until three days after he had released boone Oh, nice. so within yep. a week. Within a week. Well, sadly, Boone's partner in crime died in police custody as they were trying to get oh, a confession no. out of him. So they pretty much just huh. murdered him for a confession. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even care about that guy. Yeah, he just didn't even care about that guy, which is kind of funny that he he just apparently had no name, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Boone was the guy that mattered to them. Boone walked out of town with his gun a horse, and he had a new friend named Dirty Harris. God damn. Is that I honestly Dirty Harris? <laughs> I think a Linus from Charlie Brown. I don't know. Like these are just names. I just think a Linus from Charlie Brown, the dust cloud following him wherever yeah. he goes. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, yeah, we'll call him Linus. Dirty Linus. <laughs> Dirty yeah. Linus. Wait, Linus so, was the one with the blanket. I thought yeah, Linus was, was dirty, the though. dirty. Yeah, he's the dirty one. Is he? Dirty one with the blanket. Mm-hmm. He always had the little dust cloud. So, of course, Blake was freaking pissed as he just watched Boone walk away out of town. Nothing he could do. So, the two, the pair made their way into another town and happened upon one of the miners they had robbed. Well, that, that uh, Boone had robbed. He ran into one of the miners. It's so crazy. The two that he had left live that he shouldn't have left lived. The miner told the authorities that Boone was still alive and around. So this time they had a bunch of British authorities that were in the area. And uh, he went to them because it was there was a part British territory up there in Canada, obviously. Mm -hmm. This time was run by the British. Um, So the British tracked Boone down. And when they found him. Boone was alone, and there was no trace of Dirty oh. Harris. Oh my god! So they they when prodded about where Dirty Harris was, Boone responded with, "They had not parted ways, and Dirty Harris was still with them." Oh, and he yeah, said, his "Intestines." Why do you suppose oh. I'm fool enough to starve to death when I can help it? I ate him up, Ew. of course. Ew. Oh. I hate mouth noises. And that's how he got Some the name. Jail. Buffet Boone. Everybody who does mouth noises, jail. <laughs> I didn't, so I'm good. But he ate him with some lima beans. Lima he beans. did. Lima beans. So Boone was finally caught, and the British transferred him to the American authorities where he had the warrants. So they were headed back to the U.S. territories. He was taken to Port Townsend Jail and was only there for a few weeks before he had tunneled out of the prison. Using a knife he had taken, (laughs) and a trowel he stole from the garden. Wow. This guy is awesome at escaping jails. Yeah. Is a a trowel... What kind of tool is a trowel? Is it like a pick? Small hand shovel. It's a a small shovel, and you could also use them for... um, 
for Gordon. like um uh what is it called putting cement a cement trowel yeah he's on his way so he pretty much took what he could and he moved on from the prison knife to a bowie knife then he stole a gun and a horse so this is throughout his time moving through it so he even stole a suit which was really weird what he just stole something some kind to of suit to? yeah 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 i mean his funeral maybe so he, he made his way from Oregon all the way to California. Boone was on the run and was literally hiding behind haystacks to keep warm. Here. You could just hide from the cold behind a haystack? I didn't yeah, know that was an option. You'll never find me here. <laughs> the cold well, will you know, never find me here. <laughs> the, it blocked find the, the wind. Boone in the haystack, I dare you. Yeah, he, the, the haystack would block the wind, so he wasn't too bad. I would just get wind and straw in my eyes. Ah. Yeah. I mean, think about this in those days. There's not really much else out there that he could do without going into a house and murdering it. people. I guess, yeah. I would wear the suit. Like crawl in it to like stay warm to mm-hmm. serve your body. Yeah, I would get warm. inside. I would look like cousin it straight up. I would mm-hmm. treat I would treat my dinner a lot like Luke Skywalker did in Star Wars and just cut them open and get inside them to stay warm. True. That would have been just a, a thought. Just a thought. Everyone. Yeah, which is his friends. What? He could have killed everybody and done that. Yeah. I said he was like bigger than stuff. everyone. Like it would be like wearing a shrunken sweater. Well, he just has to find the legs that match, the arms that match. You know, he had options at this point. He could sew a few together. He would have been cool. Yeah. Ugh. Or warm, I guess. <laughs> so it, it was here that he was found by a rancher. The rancher didn't turn him in or even try and get the bounty. He sheltered Boone because he saw something of Boone in himself. Which I is very too weird. have eaten my Also, cousin. is that foreshadowing? He's like, I see myself in you. And Boone is like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I do too. It might be. We'll see. <laughs> Boone slowly got comfortable with the man and eventually told him about eating some of his traveling companions. Here or there. Yep. And you want to know what the rancher like, I did? I knew I liked you. <laughs> the rancher just met the news with a shallow nod. Damn. You did what you had to to survive, son. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Boone had found himself a real friend. One Aww. of his true friends. And they seemed we to have, have a real so bromance, much. honestly. Okay. They, they really did. Um, because even though Boone wasn't helping he wouldn't offer to do anything he would literally sleep the worst. drink and eat whatever was given to him the rancher offered him nothing but kindness oh he's probably lonely he was yeah and he didn't have a family at this the rancher didn't have a family so he just was like okay i met this guy he understands what it's like to be on the road he's eating people he's i've probably quirky. done the same thing a little quirky <laughs> They could have had themselves Grindr a nice... used to be so much different. <laughs> More like scruff. Mm. Used to just be meat grinder. Well, in the middle of the night, after a bountiful meal that they shared together, Boone oh. walked into the room and unloaded his revolver into the face of his friend. <gasps> he <sighs> took everything and then moved on. Damn. Damn. Yep. Have a good Here's life. Done. Why do you do that? Didn't, didn't even care. He got like on his way back. The deleted scene from Last of Us, where it's just like, <laughs> you know, the guy is coming in, and but then they all like hook up, and it's like a really beautiful relationship. Like, little did you know that was actually based on Boone Helm. <laughs> uh, I feel uh, like. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he just goes places and then he gets bored with what's going on because everything's too easy for him and he likes things more dramaful and mm-hmm. he likes yeah. the the chase. I'm a heartbreaker and, I like, and I need to say, a heart taker. How mm-hmm. dare you drag cinematic gaze through the mud like that? Those gays were not cannibals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They had a good life together. That was yeah, a good that was movie. cute. Go yeah, shout out Last of Us, the video game, episode. and the show. Pedro's mm-hmm. so hot. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Representation is so hot. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Our little drama king got on his way back to his old kingdom. It was time for him to return back to Oregon. He came upon the town of Florence. And I just want to say most of the towns that he visited had turned from a bustling frontier town to walled towns that were more like the East Coast cities he knew when he was young. So Mm -hmm. because he had been away for maybe a couple years, these towns pretty much went from lawless backwoods places to places that had walls, places that had a jail, places that had food, normal places, you know, it, it was it was nice for him to see. Completely unrelated to having to deal with Boone at some point. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so in Florence, Boone's reputation had preceded him. And before he could be picked up by the law, just like in Utah, the rich men in Florence grabbed him up. It was time for a little hired gun work. Jeez. Pew, pew. So anyways, I came in blasting. Came in blasting. The the rich men in town had a bone to pick with a troublesome miner named Dutch Fred. Dutch Fred. <laughs> not to be That's not a Dutch, Dutch sound. Oven. Oven. No. Yeah. He, nobody knows why they called him Dutch Fred. He literally wasn't Dutch. So... He's fucking Finnish. Yeah, yeah, he's Finnish. And that's like, about hey, what Boone was about to do to him. So Ooh. Boone had a small purse of gold and some whiskey. That's all he needed. That's all he needed. Purse first. Mm-hmm. He tried to bait Dutch Fred into a gun battle. But he and Fred were disarmed and set on their way. Literally at Aww. the tavern, they knew. Not many people at the tavern liked Dutch Fred. And they also didn't like Boone, but they were nice. They were good people. And so instead of letting them Mm -hmm. kill each other or kill somebody else, they literally took both of their weapons and said, come back and get them tomorrow. And so not at the same time, (laughs) no different times. And so honestly, it was very, very weird to see because like they talked about Boone feeling that they thought Boone felt like uh, he was, you know, like beaten. He was disarmed, you know, which is like a horrible thing. Walked away. And so he came back the next day. He grabbed his gun. Emasculated. Mm -hmm. And he saw Fred there. Hey, Fred. With his gun, after he Mm -hmm. almost walked to the door, turned around, boom, boom. The first shot missed. And the next hit Dutch Fred. Boom. In Dutch Fred was dead. Mm-hmm. Dutch Fred was dead in the head. He was dead in the head. Dead so dead Fred. Yep. <laughs> he came back to the rich men and demanded help. But they called the sheriff on him. God Again. This dude. Yep. <laughs> All these people that are hiring, they're like hiring him to kill people and then being like whoa 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 we didn't actually want you to kill them and he's like dude that's literally what you paid me money for yeah but you like, like look the job description them? says right here kill them it says kill them it literally says we don't care kill them it's like yeah that's but we all do it says care. It, I just, it literally uh... just says kill them no yeah. dead or alive it's dead or Sign. dead yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I mean you have to think about it though like these people cart. these people <laughs> think that he's you know, it's kind of up to them, the the killer, how they're going to kill him, if they can get away with it. And because Boone chooses to kill these people in the wide open, you know, as a bounty, mm-hmm. a buffet hunter, <laughs> his, mm-hmm. as he chooses mm-hmm. to kill these people in the wide open, he gets made to be that he's a murderer, which is the big deal. <sighs> That's what up. they think. He gets set up. Yeah. So how dare they? Sheriff's chasing after him. He made his way back to Canada, but he was captured by bounty hunters not that long after that. Mm. They locked him in a Portland jail in isolation for six months. Oh, Mm. shit. Mm -hmm. Damn. But to actually put him away or execute him, he had to be taken away to the place where the crime was committed, obviously. Mm. So... He was on his way back to Florence, exactly. <laughs> Which place? Yeah. So he was Which on his place? way back to Florence. There he could surely have many witnesses that could say, that was him, he did this, and finally execute him. Yeah. But no one 
would testify against him. Dude. And it's mm. not the reason you think. It was because the floors were just re-waxed and re-washed, and they didn't want another goddamn horse coming up in there. Literally. So it was almost like someone had come around and made sure no witness would tell the tale. Mm. Dude had some people on his side. Mm -hmm. It was just that. Boone sent a letter while he was in jail to his big brother to try and help him describing how he was innocent in the affair. His big brother's nickname and name was Old Tex. Oh, wow. They're not even from Texas. No, no, he wasn't. Well, he lived in Texas. This guy lived in oh, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was part gotcha. of his, uh, he had moved down there. It was kind of with... like New Tex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they called him Old yeah. Tex, though. Um, yeah. It was almost like Maybe New Mexico, were... but like, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. New Mexico, yeah. Old Mexico. Mm-hmm. Bad so. Joke. His brother, Old Hard. Tex, tracked down every witness and questioned them, then strong armed them into not testifying. Quote unquote, question them. Yes. Yeah. Them. Yep. Yeah. These guys keep dying after I'm yeah. asking them questions. All I'm saying is, where's the bodies? Right. Don't know where they're at. Yeah. Where's the bodies? I guess you didn't see shit. Where he couldn't convince a witness to back down he hired a few bigger guns to go in and help them cooperate. Damn. Damn. Okay. So he was released. Aww. Oh my God, again. How many times is this now? <laughs> Number three. Okay. And about how old is he now? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, He Not should be in his late 20s. And a half? I think he's in his <laughs> late 20s. <laughs> yeah. So this is over like almost a what, decade, five, ten year span. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. that long. Jesus, yeah. I wonder how many people he did kill. I know you said shit. in the beginning, but there, no. there's there's no there's no count to how many people he killed. And just like in the yeah. frontier, yeah. you really, really can't know honestly how many mm -hmm. people died or how many people were killed. Fifteen percent of the dysentery cases were actually. Dude, plus, home. plus the people that were hmm. killed in his name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jeez, slaughterfest. Well, his brother, relatively a good guy, because his brother honestly yeah. thought that he might be innocent. Um. Oh. So he, when he came in there, he he listened to the. He did actually listen to the people tell their stories about what they thought, and then he went mm -hmm. to the. He read the letter that Boone had sent him, and then he went to the place. And then he said, you know what? Just like you would with a family would normally do, they want to believe the best. He said, you know what? I can see where some of these uh, witnesses could have mistook what happened. Yeah, and in sis, the front I got your back. Yeah, and in the frontier days, obviously, it. easily could get, you know, people could misremember. Yeah. So, old text. Exactly. Old text tried to get Boone to change his ways. First off, he tried to get him to join the Confederacy and fight with them. Bro, we got this really cool movement. We got this really cool group. You'll fit right in. Yeah, really. All right. Um, I, I, you know what I've always said? I've always said this. Nobody wants to tell you this, but I'll tell you to your face. You would look good in gray. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Like, you would look great, fabulous, incredible mm. in gray. What do you think? Well... Boone said no. So, uh, obviously, because he didn't it's too like... too easy. It's too easy. So his brother said, okay, well, you, you don't want to join the Confederacy. How about you come home to Texas with me and you can join the family business? Family business was like cattle ranching, the normal in Texas at this time. So yeah. Boone didn't want to do that either. Of course. So while he mm -hmm. traveled with his brother... News of his arrest had spread, right? So every other place that had a warrant out for Boone's arrest mm -hmm. heard that he was arrested, thinking that he was headed to jail and execution. All the other bounties and warrants were rescinded. Ooh. So he uh. was a free man now. God damn it. Are you serious? Damn. This dude is they they Fucking didn't know that lucky. he'd been found innocent. Yeah, so he could walk along with his brother to Texas and never be heard from oh, again. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, no. All right, so he straight up has the opportunity for a completely clean 
slate. Mm-hmm. Let's see what he does. Okay. Yeah, his his plate is clean right now. Literally. Yep. Uh, he's about to go to the buffet again, though. Oh. So he decided that he didn't want to do any of all this stuff. So he left his brother. He basically yeah. just said, all right, I'll see you. Bye. Left his brother this. and went back to his murderous ways. He murdered throughout this time by himself six people and robbed another six people in the few months after he left his brother. God. So he's up to like what? Like <laughs> between 20, like five. Yeah. Like he's up to yeah. like in the 20s at this point. Or at least through the book. Yeah. 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 He's, That's been he's recorded. He's pretty high up there. And, and honestly, it could be more. Shit. He could have murdered some of the people, the other six people he yeah. robbed. This is just what's recorded, yeah. So yeah. he was now on his way to Montana. Mm. He wanted to find his, a home for himself. He's getting, you know, yeah. he's getting in the settle down time. So he wanted to find Moving acceptance. Moving to Montana soon. Mm-hmm. Gonna be a dental floss tycoon. <laughs> Anybody? Frank Zappa? No? Mm-mm. All right. Let's keep going. Well, just like Dweezil Zappa, he wanted to find acceptance that he never had when he was young. (laughs) In Montana, a gang called the Innocents. Yes, that's their name. Yes, ran the roads and they took tolls. So this is a gang, a Montana gang. And I I do want to say if you need to read the book and then the book's uh, title will be in the show notes. But the book goes into detail about what happened with the leader of the gang and who the leader of the gang was. I'll mention the leader of the gang, but not his whole mm. backstory. And it was actually very I'll give sad. you a hint. You get the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. So, they had over 100 murderers already attributed to them by the sheriffs Holy in the area, shit. the gang. So they had but they're killed, innocent. But they're the innocents, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The sheriffs obviously didn't have enough manpower to keep them in check. Boone, going along Montana, was found by the innocents. And after introducing himself, one of them found out they knew him. So, his name was feared by a lot of the law-abiding citizens. Well, they took Boone to a safe house, basically to find out what to do with them. So they they took him to a bar to meet the leader of the innocents and find out what to do with them. While they're on the way to this bar, the sheriff, weirdly enough, joined the ride and he talked and listened to Boone tell stories of his past. So I want to say this is crazy. And Boone felt safe with the sheriff being there because he's like, OK, well, if if these innocents people just murder me, they at least know yeah. who did it. So he's, yeah. you know, weirdly siding with the sheriff on this. But like at this point, he Damn. was just kind of weird. Okay. So they get to the bar. They basically they just give loads and loads of alcohol to Boone. And he's like living it, loving it, talking, yelling, okay. telling all these stories to In all the patrons. His element. Yeah. The sheriff's just sitting there, too, at the bar, listening to kind of laughing, realizing it. Mm-hmm. Boone passes out, falls oh, asleep. No. The next day, he gets woken up with the sheriff giving him coffee and breakfast. I thought you were going to say, hold up. It was at this time. No, (laughs) not yet. It was at this time Boone realized that his drinking night at the bar was the interview and that the sheriff was the leader of the innocents. (gasps) Oh. Wait, what? The sheriff was the leader. The sheriff of the town was the leader of the gang that had been robbing people. Oh, shit. He was. Oh, oh, shit. I don't even know if this counts as a plot twist. Like, this is like a a twist twist. Yep. There's already a twist happening. Yep. This is like sun kissed. Damn. (laughs) It's in the mist. Here, mist. This is the tangiest barbecue sauce I've ever had. The sheriff had a. Crazy story. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's a long story in the book. I'll sum it up real quick. The sheriff is actually a good person. He oh. kept having bad stuff happen to him when he did good things. Oh. Oh. And so one of them he was protecting. So he killed a wife abuser. Okay. 
Okay. And in those days, he got ostracized from the town because in those days they <sighs> believed it was between a man and his wife. Any intermarital mm-hmm. problems you should not interfere in. And because yeah. he did, he got kicked out of the town. Mm. He ended up moving somewhere. Like there's a couple stories about him doing similar things about helping people and then getting kicked out of a town because he interfered Damn. or he just got looked on and the got the wrong light shined on him. So he ended up yeah. going to Montana, becoming the sheriff through helping people in that town. And eventually he basically got, you know, just was like, well, you know what? I can become the leader of this gang and we can steal a bunch of money. So he kind of just oh, like his, cap. his little villain turn, you know, not a in, mm-hmm. in a bad way, but he be, had his little villain his turn. Villain era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like Boone. So we'll needless to say. The miners, being robbed all the time by the innocents, decided to form their own gang to protect themselves. <gasps> they called themselves the Vigilantes. Okay, I just <gasps> had an idea. Did so they call uncreative. themselves the Innocents because they knew that the mayor was never going to let them get in trouble and they would always be coming up as innocent? Well, no, they really didn't. They, they didn't oh. say why they had a name. They could be it. I mean, the the sheriff was not known as the leader. None of the leaders been... were known. No, if I, know, I ever started like, a gang, it would literally be like would be like oh. we're the innocents. Like this, like we're never gonna get caught. Like, oh uh, yeah, if I, probably yeah. If I ever started a gang, it would be like, um, Your Honor, my plaintiff is innocent, and like that would be the name of my gang. Is literally <laughs> Your Honor, my plaintiff is innocent. Um, and so nice. then any time, yeah, so like any time the judge is like, and uh, apparently you're a member of your honor, my plaintiff is innocent or like, you know, just like whatever you need. Like there's so there is power in words, people. And I'm just saying, like, think about it before you name yourself the killer Killingtons, like really just step back, picture yourself in court. Where do you want to be? You know, to be like, I want my name to be like you're acquitted. So every time the judge is like, and is this true? You're acquitted. And be like, thank you. Thank you so much. And everybody just closes their shit up and leaves. It's like, what are the cops going to do? They can't do anything. You're acquitted. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. The perfect crime. The irony. Yep. One thing I did forget to say, too, is, oh, well, you oh. know, kind of addition to the story, is that most of the members of the Innocents didn't know the leaderships. So like there was kind of like a leadership level. So like if you were like a a middle, you know, middle leadership guy, you knew the guy above you, but you didn't know the guy above him. So they pretty much, you know, quarantined off each each level so that nobody knew that the sheriff was actually the leader because he could just be hung super quick. So because they started forming the vigilantes and the miners, they had a lot of money. So Mm. slowly members of the innocents started going missing. And one by one, the vigilantes started arresting and killing members of the innocents. Damn. The vigilantes eventually found out and arrested the sheriff and other higher members of the innocents. Damn. They found their old friend, Boone, and arrested him as well. Oh, no. Mm Mm-hmm. They put him in jail and held pretty much a sham trial for them all. Hmm. Well, just, then he you know. got away again. Well, Boone blamed it all on one of the other's leaders named Three Fingered Jack, which I guess he just had three fingers on one hand. I'm not sure. Could not jack. Maybe he only jacked off with three fingers. That's what I was Either say. or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could have. Well, that just mean meant Three Fingered Jack was first to be hung. Mm. Once he was hung and kicking. Boone said, kick away, old fella. It's my turn next. I'll be in hell with you in a minute. Oh. Boone, our old buddy, was next. Right before he was hung, shouted to the crowd, every man for his principles. Hurrah for Jeff Davis. Let her rip. Long live Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, yeah. Roll he, tide. Was, he was a southern Roll boy. Roll tide. Roll tide. But a Confederacy boy, so he was a terrible person. So never mind. Don't as tied. <laughs> as the noose was around his neck, instead of being hung, 
he leapt from the box and basically Damn. killed himself instead of being hung. Damn. You'll yep. never catch me. Damn. <laughs> yep. So that's the end of the Boone story. I do want to say that the sheriff was the one who was hung next from the scaffold that he had helped build not too long before that. Irony. Damn. Poor little sheriff. And so came the end of Levi Boone Helm, a murderous alcoholic cannibal who did not ever want to conform to the norms that started being built around him. He was a true frontier man and lived by those times. He did what he had to do sur- to survive and that kind of life. And it, he had maybe lived maybe 25 to 50 years earlier. He could have fit in a bit better, mm. especially in the yeah. frontier days. He betrayed everyone who believed in him, starting at his father and ending with the people who gave him a chance and a gang full of people just like him. Boone wasn't just a cannibal as far as eating people. He was a cannibal of society. Mm. He was a true yeah. life representation of frontier life. And to be honest, I'd like not to be in a line with him at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Thank you for listening to the Black Cat Report in our episode on the Kentucky Cannibal, Levi Boone Helm. Please like, review, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next week with our second episode of Cannibal Month. We're ready to take a bite out of a few more cannibals. And thank you, Rachel, for being a special guest on this episode. And we'll see you next week.